All right. Well, the time is now 404. So I want to go ahead and get started because we do have a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff to cover today. So welcome everybody to our December edition of the Cielo workshop series. My name is Alex Alvarez. I'm a program manager with Cielo. And uh, again, welcome everybody um, for being here for this uh, presentation today. Very excited about um, hosting this one. Um, but before we start, I see a lot of um, I see some familiar faces. I see a lot of new ones too, which is great. Um, thank you again for, for being here. But um, I want to go ahead and do a quick introduction on Cielo. For some of you, you may already know who we are. For others of you, this is the first time you've heard of us. So Cielo, um, we stands for this, the Community for Innovation, Entrepreneurship, Leadership, and Opportunities. Who we are and what we do. Um, we officially launched in 2015, but we've been helping clients since 2012. Um, we're a nonprofit organization helping aspiring entrepreneurs become business owners. And uh, we help you build and develop the entrepreneur mindset needed to help you achieve success. We provide the resources and guidance, and you provide the hard work and passion. So essentially what we do is we help um, business owners and entrepreneurs who try to help you uh, achieve that goal of being self-employed and having a business launch. Some uh, services that we offer here at Cielo, um, we do offer small business development training. So we do offer um, training programs throughout the year. We do a monthly workshop series like this one. Um, where we'll have different topics. We do this for a lot of different reasons. Um, one, this is a way for our community, right? The small business community to get to know different um, resources that are out there. So in this case, we're gonna have two new ones that we hope that um, you'll, you'll learn from and um, get a chance to connect to at some point. We do offer one-on-one -on -one small business coaching and we do try to connect small businesses with different resources and services that may be able to help them achieve their goal of business launch. Some upcoming events that we have at Cielo, um, our Cielo Small Business Startup Program. Um, our next one's coming up on January 18th, 2022 at 4 p.m. So this is our first one for next year, um, January 18th. Take a journey on the entrepreneur roadmap to business launch. So this is a six week training program for entrepreneurs and startups. So if you're new to business or if you've started your business, but you kind of hit a little bit of a pause and maybe looking to relaunch it again, this is a perfect, um, perfect training program for you. It's a six week program. It includes three weeks of live classroom training and three weeks of one-on-one -on -one individual business coaching. Topics include how to pick a business name, advertising on social media, introduction to business financials, and a lot more. So that takes us to today's guest speakers. So as I mentioned, we're very excited to have our two guest speakers here today um, presenting on sole proprietorship one-on-one. Being that I've been in this business for some time, and I do work with a lot of clients. We do have a lot of clients who um, start off as a sole proprietor it may always be a sole proprietor as well too. So there's always a lot of questions involved. And uh, it's great to have these two resources here, Jocelyn Cuesta from Small Business Majority and Melba Paquero from Accessity. So for those of you who um, are familiar with the organizations, great. If not, this is a great opportunity for you to learn more about uh, what they offer and also learn a little bit more about small business. So with that said, um, Jocelyn, I'll go ahead and, um, and give it to you. And whenever you're set, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Alex. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here. As Alex said, my name is Jocelyn Cuesta. I'm the Senior California Program Manager for Small Business Majority. And so the first part is going to be um, talking about sole proprietorship and some home-based businesses that you can do in Orange County. And then I'll hand it over to Melba, who will talk about some funding opportunities that are available to those starting home-based businesses. So if you'll just give me a second and I'll start sharing my screen with you. I will turn off my camera uh, while I'm presenting. 
Oh, Jocelyn, while you're doing that too, mm -hmm. I will mention that um, Jocelyn will be able to uh, provide the presentations yes. and resources to all of you as well too. So um, if for any reason you feel like you got to copy down all the slides, it's okay. We're going to send you a, a copy of that through email. Also, um, if you have any questions, feel free to add them on the chat. Um, I will. Uh, I can um, let uh, Jocelyn and Melba know of any questions uh, that you may have and ask them. Thank you, Alex. Let me just. Them. Does everybody see the PowerPoint? All right. So a little bit about small, this is me, a little bit about Small Business Majority. We're a national nonprofit focused on advocacy and education on a variety of small business issues. Our mission is to ensure America's entrepreneurs are a key part of an inclusive, equitable, and diverse economy. Uh, we've been around since 2005, and we have successfully advocated on policies around healthcare, workforce, access to capital, and other issues that impact low and moderate income entrepreneurs. We also focus on supporting small business owners that represent communities of color, as we recognize the importance of providing resources for these businesses to grow and thrive. Uh, so this is the topics that we'll be covering today, registering your small business, sole proprietorship, starting a home-based business, tools to get you started, and then how to fund your business. So why entrepreneurship? Small business ownership can actually provide freedom to create income and build wealth, especially generational wealth, if you're looking to pass something on to your family and your children. In California alone, there are 4.2 million small businesses. And small businesses actually employ half of the state's workforce, uh, almost half of 48% of Californians are employed by a small business owner. And small business at, businesses actually make up 99.8% of all businesses in the state. So we're gonna dive right into what happens when you need to launch your business. Uh, and here in California, there are many different uh, levels that you have to touch on. You need to file paperwork with your city, with your county and with your state uh, agency. Uh, so when you receive this PowerPoint, each of these are links. This is the link to the SOS website. In Orange County, it's a bit more unique. Uh, every government agency in Orange County, every city, uh, is differs a little bit on how they handle businesses, especially home-based businesses. So I've provided a link to every city. Uh, this provides you a direct link to every city in Orange County. And so the benefit of this is that Orange County doesn't have a huge overhead on, on regulations on how to conduct home-based businesses. The uh, only thing you have to do on an Orange County level is if you are um, if you're uh, if you're an individual business owner, so a sole proprietor, uh, or you're in a partnership, or you are a married couple, do you need to go to the county for a second uh, permit license, uh, business license? And so that is actually called the fictitious business name statement uh, with the county of or with Orange County. And then uh, I've also provided links. You're going to want to look for to make sure your business. When you're doing business in California, you'll want to check to make sure that that business, um, the name is not already taken. So I provided that link as well so you could do your search. Uh, and then uh, once you've done that and you found a business name that no one else has, then you'll also go to your next step and you'll want to publish that business name for 30 days in a newspaper. And that also comes out of out a fee. So you'll want to take that cost into consideration in addition to filing with the state, the county, and your local city. Uh, once you have established your name and you've done all of the registering with the state, county, and the city, 
you want to make sure that you separate your business checking and savings account from your personal account. It is incredibly important to keep both separate for many reasons. One, you want to be able to track your business income and your expenses separate from your personal. Record keeping will establish and operate your businesses, save you money, and it helps you when you're uh, applying for loans, applying for grants, uh, and it keeps everything completely clean. One thing to keep in mind is there are uh, software, accounting softwares that you can touch on. Uh, QuickBooks is one that uh, really serves small business owners. I, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, um, a salesperson for QuickBooks, but they do a training program uh, and they do workshops and ha they have a hands-on learning program. And so another reason to keep your separate your your finances separate is when you're doing taxes, uh, and it's just very clean. Uh, when you're trying to purchase equipment or material, you'll want to keep that separate as well so that you can have all your records in place. Uh, one thing that we've learned from the pandemic when applying for grants, you have to show a profit and loss statement, you have to show your budget, you have to show your balance sheet, and if you cross your personal finances with that, it gets really messy. And Melba can touch on that, that how important it is. And so we'll dive into sole proprietorship. There are several different types of business structures that you can follow. Always seek the guidance of an attorney or a tax uh, advisor uh, before launching your business. Uh, but the two I'm going to talk about are sole proprietorship and LLCs, only because sole proprietorship is the easiest way to go. Uh, it doesn't come at a cost to you, uh, an additional cost. And it's not additional paperwork like the other structures are. A sole proprietor has total control of everything, receives all profits, and is responsible for taxes and liabilities of the business. Uh, so that's one thing that uh, is the downfall is that if you're operating as a sole proprietor, you could um, come into some legal and credit uh, barriers. And again, that was something you'd wanna discuss with an attorney or a tax advisor. And I also have a link uh, provided later on in the slide of one that offers free to low cost services. Uh, sole proprietors are unincorporated businesses with one owner. They're the simplest structure. Uh, there is no, like I said, no legal distinction between a business and an owner. Uh, the only thing you'd have to do is do your business name filing and a business certificate and your permitting and license and you don't have to do the extra steps if you are a, a sole proprietor. Um, so when you form with an, a name other than the individual's name, so if you have, um, if your name is Jane Doe and then you decide to, your fictitious business name is uh, John Smith's Fish, Fishing Shop, then you'll um, wanna also uh, file that with the county as your principal place of business as well with the fictitious business name. Um, you, want, you won't have to do any formation documents, like I said, with the California's uh, SOS Secretary of State's office, only the state filings in the county and the, the, the city. If you have not formed a corporation or LLC, then you are a sole proprietor. That's what that means. So if you didn't do an LLC, if you didn't do anything else, uh, one of these different corporations, then you are a sole proprietor you and your business are legally the same. Uh, you are personally responsible for every penny that your business owes to business creditors and personally liable for our liabilities of the business. There are insurances, umbrella insurances that you can get to cover that if you don't want to pursue a limited liability um, company or any of the other partnerships. And so as I mentioned, an LLC is a business entity. It's comprised of one or more members um, owning a certain share of the company. Uh, many companies do, many small business owners do prefer an LLC because it can it keeps your business and your personal assets and credit separately, and it can protect your personal savings and assets from business creditors and any legal actions. That is not a guarantee though. So again, you want to talk to an attorney about what's best for you and your family. The downside to an LLC is that if you're a new business and you're starting, that means you're not really uh, 
bringing in revenue and you have to pay $800 to the franchise tax board every year, even when you're not making money, if you are registered as an LLC. And then of course you have to do the articles of organization and any other uh, formation paperwork that's required of an LLC to the California Secretary of State. And that if you cannot do them yourself does come at an additional cost. Uh, so the takeaway from all of this is you wanna run your business like a real business. You wanna make sure you're um, registered uh, city, county, and state level. You want to make sure your your business, um, your finances are completely separate to avoid any kind of consequences that could ca come your way. So, like I said, Orange County is actually a little more unique than other counties uh, when you're doing a home based business. Um, You want to check with the city that you reside in uh, because Orange County doesn't require a, a home based business uh, permit. Uh, but unless you're, of course, doing something food related or in home child care related, if you aren't doing any of those things, you want to go directly to your city and you want to find out if they have what's called typically a home occupation permit. Uh, every city differs in how they call that, what that, that permit is called, uh, but you'd want to say something along the lines of home occupation. Uh, so some cities do require that you have to have a business license and the, um, the license to an, an additional license to have your, your business in your home. And so every city is different. I think Brea doesn't have one unless your location is food. Uh, but Santa Ana, for example, you do have to have a home occupation permit and that does come at an additional cost. And with Santa Ana, if you are doing a, a food-based business, you have to do an additional permit for public works from the public works agency. And just keep in mind that these additional permits, especially for home-based occupation permits, they will require in-home inspections and they could require other um, requirements for the city. Luckily, there are a lot of checklists with each city's permit office. So when you go to your local uh, government municipality, please ask for the permit office. Uh, and then you also want to start, you want to reach out to them before you move forward and while you're planning your budget because they, there may be additional shelling, uh, shelling out of upfront costs before you can even get started. Uh, there's always safety measures that uh, when they come and do the in-home inspection that you might have to consider and those come at a cost as well as well as signage. In Orange County, you have for home-based businesses what it's called the cottage food operation. And this again is um, not unique to Orange County. It is a statewide program. Uh, I will provide for Orange County uh, the Department of Health's uh, packet um, with, with this PowerPoint. And so if you're interested in doing a home-based business, back in 2013, California um, passed AB 1616, uh, the Cottage Food Act, and it allows small food businesses to produce low-risk foods. So that means baked goods, candies, jams, jellies, desserts, uh, nuts, some of the type of foods that you could see at a, a farmer's market. And it allows you to operate out of your home uh, with limited regularity, uh, regulatory oversight as long as you're meeting the criterion. And so the cottage food operation from the Orange County Health Department requires you to take a training before you can move forward. Uh, like I said, my team will provide you with those documents. So in that will be the list of food that is allowed, the application and the, inf and the training information. For a CFO, uh, there are two different types of uh, levels. You can get a class A permit, which is allows you to sell directly to consumers from your home. Uh, class B permit, if you want to sell products to a third party real re retailer who will sell your products for you. And so those are the two distinctions and you'll wanna decide which is best for you. You could also always do both. Uh, any person who prepares or packages food, cottage food, must complete a food processor course uh, within three months of becoming registered. So you have to go through all of the permitting first 
before you can even take the training uh, program. And then you have to take it every three years. And so if anybody in your home who's over the age of 18 is also going to help you with this business, they have to take the same course. You will also have to pay for them to have the, a food handler's card or certification and proof that they, um, they completed the training. So those are, again, additional costs that you have to keep in, uh, keep in mind when you're creating your budget. Um, these uh, home-based business does require additional permitting um, and strict regulations and in home um, and home inspections. So those are things you want to keep in mind again when you're writing your budget. And the downside to a CFO is that they cap your sales at fifty thousand. Um, so you'd have to also take into consideration once you've surpassed that, what's the next step for your business? And how can you grow your business from there? Uh, and also, a CFO requires you to create a label that says product made in home kitchen. And something that is not um, shared too often is that you have to have that the mock-up of that label uh, ready in advance when you're applying uh, for the CFO. Um, and then you can only have, you can't have more than one employee. There is a bill that passed recently in 2019 called AB 626. It allows home cooks to request a permit to sell food directly to the public from their home. Uh, this one has a bit more uh, leeway to what you can do out of your house, but Orange County did not uh, opt into it. Every county can opt into it at their discretion. Um, Orange County as a county did not opt into it, but that doesn't mean that your local city didn't. Each city has full discretion to uh, to, uh, to opt into this program. So when you reach out to your city, ask them if they um, opted into MECO, M-E-H-K-O, and that's from AB 626. So for, um, for the food cottage, if you're doing it in Orange County, uh, remember, you, you can only go by the list of food that's approved. If you want to do something that's outside of that, you have to call the health department and touch base with them. Uh, once you've, you've determined what food you want to make, you're going to submit your operation packet, which I'll include. That comes at a $54 cost just for them to review. The health inspector, inspector will review your application and then touch base with you. If he approves it, then you go on to the next step of uh, your permit, and that's uh, determining if you're going to be class A, B, or both. And then from there, you'll want to uh, take the class. Another um, Another opportunity for home-based businesses in Orange County are uh, food trucks, uh, pre-packaged trucks, unpackaged carts, um, and mobile any mobile food facility. And so that could be catering, taco trucks, uh, ice cream trucks, which would be super fun, um, uh, churro carts, uh, shaved ice, hot dog, and coffee cappuccino carts. Or if you're doing a pre-packaged cart, uh, selling things that are already uh, pre-packaged, uh, you can do those as well. And uh, those businesses, again, through the county, uh, would require you to go through the Department of Health and Safety, uh, pass their inspection, cover, uh, they have uh, permit fees that you'd have to cover, and then they'll give you a decal that goes on the outside of your cart. And so that um, falls in line when you're reaching out to your city, ask them if they've opted into SB 946, which is a bill that was recently passed, which makes it easier to sell on sidewalks. Every city has to want uh, has the choice to opt into it. So you'll want to check with your uh, city and ask them if they've opted into that because it makes it easier for you to be able to sell on a sidewalk. Um, uh, in front of a, a place of business, and you'll want to find out what those regulations are as well. And then lastly, uh, home-based businesses uh, with license, uh, a licensed in-home childcare provider, that's a, a really common home-based business. Uh, it does not come without its regulations. Um, they do, of course, uh, most home, home daycare centers are sole proprietors. And um, although being the sole proprietor is easier and the least expensive structure, uh, it does mean you'll have to file both business and personal taxes with your in-home child care. Um, 
You also have to go through an orientation, which I recommend you do the orientation before you create your model, before you move forward to determine if it's the right thing for you. I had a friend who opened up one and it was quite a headache. They came and inspected multiple times. Uh, you have to determine what age group that you're going to have. I believe you can't have more than six children per person. And so if you're going to bring in a second person, then you need to cover the cost um, that uh, comes from the background check and making sure that they uh, are up to the regulations. And so they come multiple times and they also, once your business has started, they do, do drop in uh, visits uh, as well. So you'll have to determine the age group that uh, you want to have, the hours, uh, some in-home childcare only do business hours, 24 hours, uh, emergency drop-ins. Um, uh, so you can determine how you will want to do that. And then if you have babies, uh, you'll have to have your house completely, um, what is it when you have the, the childproof locks? And that and they come and they inspect that as well. So that is one separate inspection from all the others that they come and do. Uh, anybody who lives in the home will be required to also pass um, a, cr a criminal record clearance as well. So um, once you've started your, your um, you've, you've got your business bank account, your plan, you know what you wanna do, uh, you've uh, registered with the city, county and the state, got all of your permit and licensing, please, please, please do not forget to take care of your social, um, your health and your financial well-being. This is something that uh, a lot of small business owners do not think about, especially when they're planning. And if the pandemic taught us anything, it's the importance of creating a safety net. Uh, so please add this to your checklist, whether you want to use CalSAVERS or you wanna to talk to a private um, um, professional who handles uh, IRAs or any type of uh, savings account. Uh, CalSAVERS is pretty easy. It's through the state. It's run public, publicly and privately. If you don't have any employees, you can opt into it. Uh, you just go to calsavers.com and um, you sign yourself up and then they um, create a basic IRA for you and then you just uh, pay into it. It's super easy. And like I said, you don't have to choose CalSAVERS, but please plan for your, um, your safety net. And then of course, health. Uh, we learned anything, it's, being, it's making sure the importance of getting a healthcare plan, whether you wanna go through Covered California, which is open right now, or if you wanna go in a different avenue, but always put your health and your financial well-being as a priority when planning and starting your business. Um, and then of course, your marketing strategy. I know it seems really easy right now with Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok um, and uh, websites that we can uh, make our own on our own with WordPress and Shopify accounts. Uh, but marketing, you want a strategy. Uh, it's the promoting and selling of your product. It's your your overall game plan, uh, it's your branding, it's your message, it's your story. And so you wanna make sure that you strategize in advance. You don't wanna do this after you've already purchased the products and you've already, um, you know, have gone and you wanna do it up front. I had a friend who uh, started a luxury um, children's um, online store and she bought all the products up front. Um, I did everything, but did not have a marketing plan. And so when you do that without a marketing plan, you're losing money already out the gate. Uh, so you want to make sure that you know what your business product is. You want to know who your competitors are. You want to know what your strategy is before um, you even launch. And so one thing you want to do is get an, uh, make an assessment of your customers, your target market. Are they online? Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? Um, are they, would they, do they prefer traditional uh, marketing direct mail? Who is your target audience? What platform are they on? Uh, how much time are they spending online or in person? And then what's your level of understanding on platforms? 
don't dr jump into something. If you if you're like me, I've never even tried TikTok. Uh, I'm not going to launch my my marketing strategy on TikTok. I don't know how to use it. I'm not going to try <laughs> at this stage in the game. Uh, and one thing you always always ask for input and do your research. Uh, and tap into your personal network. Uh, one of my uh, friends just started a business, and one thing that she did was her her target audience were uh, mothers like her, and so she um, she asked all of um, her friends. Uh, kind of like an informal focus group, what it was they were looking for, what kind of products were they interested in. She did her research and she target and she spoke to those in her target market. So definitely tap into your personal network to help you plan your strategy. Um, and then again, don't toss so much money into marketing. I know there's a lot of organizations out there, a lot of companies that can promise you the world up and down if you give them hundreds and thousands of dollars, but right out the gate, start small. And then as your business grows, grow your, um, your marketing budget and what you're, what you're able to do. There are grants, especially from Google, uh, sometimes Facebook, you can look for that will help will give you um, free advertising. Uh, so look into that as well. And then um, I really loved this business plan checklist, so I included it. Uh, it helps you think all about the details of how your company is going to work. It serves as an action plan to organize and sustain um, your business. It helps you kind of identify and define your target market. Um, it also uh, shows you how you will earn uh, your money and it helps you plan and anticipate your future and capital needs. And then of course, it also reminds you to tell the story of your business uh, to others and how you'll want to do that. And then last, almost lastly, <laughs> what I, I included um, this, this worksheet called the idea napkin. And uh, this is the business, uh, this is the, the link to this toolkit. And there are others on there if you prefer a different worksheet. I really like this one because it's simple. Uh, it's it, it, it's something that you can draw. You know, you've heard stories of people in restaurants, they put their business idea on a napkin in the bar one day, and now it's framed because they're making millions and billions of dollars years later. Um, but the I, I love it. It's basic. It's visual. Um, you can start by uh, how do you come back to the basics? Uh, whenever you feel a little lost, you come back to this. You visualize again where you, where um, you are planning to go when you you started the model. And so it also helps you kind of plan on how you're going to make money. Uh, this website also has other worksheets um, for uh, to shape your business model called Business Model Canvas, Lean Startup Canvases, and then, of course, the Idea Napkin that you can download. Um, one last thing I'd like to, to um, reiterate is when you think about what kind of business you want to go into, tap into your prior experience and your knowledge. Um, if you worked in your a retail space for years and you moved up from folding clothes to managing stores, tap into that. Maybe that's what um, your business should be is to open your own retail store because you've seen from the beginning to all the way up to management what it takes to run it. Leverage your, leverage your strengths. Uh, it's great when we have passions about things. Um, but we may not have the background or the knowledge. It doesn't mean you can't educate yourself in those. But if you're if you really want to succeed, you want to tap into what your your strong points are and what your experience is. And that experience also uh, for some loan and grant programs, uh, if you're a startup, they do look at if you've had experience in that industry when you're applying for a business loan. Uh, so if you started a business. Um, and you had 12 years experience in that industry alone, then that will help help you when you're trying to apply for a business loan. I've also provided some resources in Orange County uh, for everybody. And uh, again, when you receive the PowerPoint, you'll be able to click on these links. Uh, the SBDC of Orange County, they have free counseling and free and low cost training. 
Uh, the score of, um, in Orange County actually has 23 locations for mentoring. And because of COVID right now, you can um, receive mentoring on video as well. And I did mention that there was a pro bono attorney um, that, we, that we've partnered with in the past. Again, there are many out there. Uh, I'm not promoting just this one. Uh, it just, they have some really great resources that I've liked and they're a nonprofit. And they do focus on um, providing entrepreneurs with pro bono attorneys and financial and marketing as well. And then the Inland Empire Women's Business Center, they serve Orange County because Orange County does not have one. And so they'll help you again with business counseling and training, and they do provide training programs as well. Um, and then one that it was just introduced to me recently is the Child Care Business Institute. Yesika uh, is dedicated to preparing future business owners in the field of in-home child care. Uh, she has a network of over 2,000 uh, in-home child care businesses in her network, and she provides um, training. Uh, she'll hold your hand through the process of starting your business, and she will go through the legalities with you as well of what you need to start a daycare in your home. And then lastly, uh, Small Business Majority has a uh, has um, a platform called Venturize.org, and it's a free unbiased resource hub to help you um, make informed financing decisions and ways to grow your business. So if you're looking for um, services and you're not sure where to go, we have vetted services. We have uh, vetted lenders that we've made sure that provide um, uh, responsible lending products. Uh, we have tools, checklists for like borrowing 101, uh, lending, um, a, a, che a checklist for what you need for when you're applying for your business loan. Uh, we have um, several tools on, um, on a, like a match finder tool to help you match up to the resources that you need in your area. And one of those responsible lenders is Melba with Accessity. And she's one of our... Um, she would be somebody that you would find on our platform as well. And so I'll hand it over to Melba. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here today. Having a wonderful Wednesday. Um, so I am with Accessity. We are formerly known as Exion Serving Southern California. We went through the name change earlier this year. I'm still offering all the great programs. Um, I am one of the, uh, there's about five business development officers. And I currently uh, cover um, Riverside, North San Diego County, um, uh, Orange County, and also parts of LA County. Um, that's my, my uh, email address. If anybody wants to take that down, um, go to the next slide, Jocelyn. Okay. So, um, this is who we are. We're basically a community development financial institution, also known as a CDFI. We are a mission-based lender, and we try to open doors of financial opportunity primarily to those who have um, historically been offered um, uh, less access to capital and business support, uh, and entrepreneurs of color, women, immigrant, low to moderate income entrepreneurs, hoping that they can build a prosperous business and livelihood for themselves and their families while also strengthening um, our commu communities in general. Uh, we've been around since 1994 and have dispersed more than 52 million in loans. And this past year, um, we actually served this past year being um, part of this year. And also during the pandemic, we actually served more entrepreneurs than any other year in our history, um, which I thought was amazing considering, you know, everything that was going on with businesses. Um, we are funded by government agencies, banks, foundations, former clients, and um, also individuals um, who support our mission. We, uh, our services, our businesses, um, I'm sorry, the, serv the businesses we service, the locations are located in San Diego, Imperial, Riverside, um, San Bernardino, and I know it says coming soon, but um, we are already starting to take the applications in Orange and um, LA counties. Okay, who we can help. So we, what's uh, really uh, special about us is that we can actually fund startup businesses. 
basically somebody that comes with that idea on the napkin and says, I think this is going to work. Uh, they go to the bank, bank says, no way, you know, you don't have the two years, you don't have the gross um, sales. That's who we want. We want those people. So it's uh, pre-revenue business loans that, that we're able to give. Uh, they do require that if you are coming up with a startup business that you at least have a business plan put together um, with one year projections. Uh, we do hope to see um, some source of income. And if not, we can take a co-borrower um, who is either part of the business or is just coming on to help with uh, the part of proving capacity. Uh, let me just say very, very, very important. A lot of people wanna start their business do not quit whatever job you have now. Uh, we have people that have really good ideas and they quit their job. And unfortunately, if you don't have a way to pay this loan, which is how we prove capacity, we will not be able to approve you. So I just wanted to add that in. Okay, we also fund existing businesses um, who are unable to get bank funding. Like I mentioned, they don't have uh, sufficient time in business. They don't have enough credit history or they're in a high risk industry or um, they have low credit scores or past challenges. We are willing to work with all of these um, as long as you're current on all your accounts right now on the credit report. So you could have had late payments um, you know, for any reason, but as long as you're current and no open collections, we are able to try to work with you. Uh, we will also consider applicants with no FICO. Um, if we can get collateral, which would be in the form of a pink slip on a vehicle, uh, or if you can have a, get a co-borrower to come on. Uh, next slide. Okay, so these are the loans. Uh, let me go over some of the loans that we have. The startup and expansion loans, we start off from 8,000 to 100,000. Rates are anywhere from 6.99 to 14.99. That is um, fixed rates. Um, it's based on the strength. That is what's going to dictate where you're going to land in terms of the rate. Uh, we do not have prepayment penalties with any of our loan products. It is a simple interest, fully amortized loan. There's no application fee. And uh, we can usually approve and disperse within two to three weeks, although we are uh, have been able to streamline this process and are able to get some loans done in less than a week. The payback terms uh, are anywhere from 12 to 72 months. And of course, that's going to depend on where on the spectrum, you know, your loan amount was, if it was from 8,000 or 100,000. Um, we do have closing costs. They're charged only at closing. So it's if once we present to you or an offer in writing, um, if you decide you want to move forward, the, it would be, um, you would pay 95 max on average if the loan is less than 5,000. And it would be 6% of the loan amount if it's um, over 5,000. We do give a 1% discount for uh, veterans and active duty uh, military. And this is, everything is done. You know, we need to have all documents uh, collected. We can't give you quote unquote, like um, well, a quote, I guess, without seeing all the documentation. Next slide. Okay. We also offer rapid loans. Um, these rapid loans range in uh, from 300 to 8,000. Interest rate on these are 6.99 to 14.99. We can usually approve and disperse this in as little as three days. This will be a six to 36 month uh, repayment term. It's very low documentation um, and it does include a, a short interview that the underwriter would wanna do with the, with the borrower. Fees here are um, again, same, uh, well, for these, it's uh, 95 if it's under 5,000, 6% if it's over 5,000. And again, the same 1% discount for veterans and active mil duty military applies. Next slide. Okay, so this is a special loan that we're doing as a participating lender in the California Rebuilding Fund. It's a COVID relief loan. Uh, the uh, loan amounts are anywhere from 2,000 to 50,000. The thing with this loan though, is it, you do have to meet the criteria set forth by the state. Uh, qualifications for us, maximum revenue would have been 250,000. Your business needed to be uh, up and running prior to June 30th of 2019. And you needed to show uh, that you were profitable in 2019 on that tax return. There is a minimum credit score of 500. 
And the way you qualify and the amount you're given is, is actually uh, calculated by you having to demonstrate that you took a 10% reduction in 2020. And then they calculate from the profit that you made in 2019 and they run some numbers and then they'll come up with an amount. If you receive any other kind of relief funding from, you know, uh, idle PPP, even if it's a, if it's the same type of COVID relief loan, but just from a different CDFI, we can still, um, we can still try to get you approved for additional funding. These loans are usually approved and dispersed in about three days from the time that all documents are um, collected. Interest rate is four and a quarter. And the first 12 months of this uh, payments are interest only. Terms are anywhere from 36 uh, to 60 months, no prepayment penalties with this one um, either. And the fee on the loan is um, $250 on loans, only if they're uh, 5,500 and above. Next uh, slide. Okay. This is very important. The do's and don'ts of trying to apply for a loan, the things that you should try to get together and make sure that you're doing prior to applying. Um, do register your business. We are going to need to see um, that the business is legally um, registered here in California and that it's in good standing. Uh, definitely will need to open a business bank account. And you know, always protect your credit, make sure that you're not just going from lender to lender and having everybody, you know, run your credit. Every time they do a hard pull, you are losing uh, quite a bit of points on your FICO score and they start adding up. Um, try to get capital before you need it, uh, you know, plan ahead because if you're already, you've depleted all of your savings and you don't have anywhere else to turn, that's actually a little bit too late to start looking for um, funding because we're gonna look at that. We wanna see that you have healthy balances, that there's money coming in. So try to plan, and I know that's not always possible, but try to plan to get this funding that you need before you actually need it. Um, report business revenue and expenses accurately on your taxes. I know um, a lot of accountants and even a lot of business owners don't really wanna report everything because they don't want to pay taxes. Unfortunately, when you need to apply for funding, that's where we're going to base these loans on is going to be what you're showing on your tax return. So if you have a business that's making a very, you know, incredible amount of money, let's say 250,000, and then you report 260,000 in losses, from an underwriter's perspective, your business is not going, you know, in a positive direction. And it's gonna be very difficult for anyone to wanna to approve you for a loan when it seems like your business is just running you know, on a negative all the time. So try to plan with that. Um, try to report as accurately as you can. Uh, again, like I said, I mentioned earlier, don't quit your job um, prior to trying to get a loan. You need to be able to show some capacity to, to pay this until your business get, you know, takes off. Um, don't borrow from predatory lenders. I know they make it super easy, you know, call in, get an answer in, you know, 60 seconds, sign here, and you look and see you paid, you know, upwards of 100% uh, interest on these loans. Uh, uh, definitely uh, make sure that you've done your research, uh, start speaking to what we call the experts, you know, look for the community, look to see where you can get some help, uh, you know, uh, small business majority, Cielo, they're offering uh, all kinds of community uh, incentives for you, things that they can help you with. Definitely take advantage of that and do your homework. Uh, don't sign any leases before your loan gets approved. Uh, another very important thing, commingling, try to not put your personal funds mixed in with a business account because it turns into a mess. And then later on, it's very hard to separate the two. Uh, definitely don't want to start without a clear business plan. Uh, don't run out of money. That's going back to getting the capital before you need it. And don't use your credit cards to fund your business. Next slide. Okay, these are industries that we are not able to lend to. And it's pretty much the same businesses that actual um, banks, uh, most banks are not able to lend to. So it's the same, you know, alcohol sales. We, we can 
uh, fund like breweries and distilleries and, and places that sell alcohol along with food, but not like a bar um, or a liquor store. No animal reproductive clinics. Um, unfortunately, no art galleries. That's considered speculative. Um, auto dealerships, uh, cannabis, uh, lenders, brokers, or other investment firms, anything having to do with firearms or weapons. Um, no games of chance or wagering you know, pornography, predatory lending services, tobacco, those types. Oh, very important. A lot of people want to get money for real estate investment. We cannot do that. That's considered the flipping. Um, and we're unable to lend at this time to that. Next slide. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, that's my name. That's my direct uh, extension. Uh, my cell number is not on there, but if anybody wants to take it, it's 760 636 3075. That actually rings to my cell phone, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mel and Jocelyn, for your uh, presentation today. That was a lot of good information. So I, we definitely appreciate it. A lot of good information and insight. Um, I will say this to follow up on what. Um, Melba was saying it is very hard to get a, um, a business loan from a traditional bank. Um, so she mentioned that at the beginning. So um, for a lot of uh, new business owners, entrepreneurs, there's not a whole lot of choices. Uh, I used to work at a bank. So I remember a lot of people would come in hoping to get a business loan just because you think I need lending for, for, uh, for my business. It's brand new. Where do I go? I go to a bank. And then they get a little bit disappointed. So, um, so that's where resources like Accessity come in. And thank you, Jocelyn, for, um, for bringing that resource in as well, too, for this presentation. So with that said, I know we have um, a few minutes left and we covered a lot of information, went over a lot of different topics, but I wanna see if anybody had any questions um, for our guest speakers, both Mel and Jocelyn. Hey, Alex, this is Bert. I've, I've got a quick question. Um, for it's for Melba. Uh, when when the loans are funded, are the loans fully funded, meaning the entire amount goes to whoever is approved, or is it a drawdown? The okay, that's a very good question. So normally the the okay, if you're getting a business funded, these are commercial loans with a personal guarantee. So the funds are actually going to go to the business that applied for the loan, right? The only time it doesn't go to the business is if you're buying like um, equipment or a vehicle where we're uh, paying off um, a seller. At that point, we would wire the funds to that seller and then they would hand over the um, collateral to, um, to you. And then we would take over the title. We would go on as a, as a lien holder, right? Um, but generally you get all the money sent to you. You know, it's a, it's a closed end loan. We're not, uh, it's not like a line of credit or anything like that, or where we just give you in parts, we give you all the money. And then basically you, you use that the way you need to, you know, in whichever way you see fit. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for that, Bert. Um, does anybody else have any other questions for uh, Melba or Jocelyn? Albert. Uh, yes, I was wondering, um, there's, you know, you can have your traditional um, bank account, your business bank account with the financial institution. Um, what about, there's a lot of online options that are available now, where there's a, there's a bunch of options that do online banking for business banking. Are those um, good ideas as a, as a, a, a business owner, as a sole proprietor? <laughs> Um, I could I could try to answer at least from Accessity's um, point of view. Uh, we have had a couple of clients that have um, come in and applied for a loan, um, and they have um, some kind of online banking account. Uh, that is, um, it's okay. Uh, the only thing is that, and I'm not sure if this is on everyone. I'm just saying on like the the two or three that I've had. When it came down to getting um, like the the bank statements and and getting access, it was a little bit more difficult for us to do that because since it's not a traditional 
a lending institution where we could, you know, we can automate everything uh, was a little bit more difficult, more challenging for the client to then get us these bank statements because the way they would come uh, get printed out, it had no bank on it. It would not have any of the identifying information that we actually needed to get. And so it turned into a little bit of an issue, not saying we couldn't do it, but it took a little bit more effort on uh, the client's uh, behalf to get us what we needed to meet the, the you know, requirements for the lending options. Uh, I'd like to add to that. Something that I've seen previously to small business majority, um, I worked on a grant program. And so uh, small business owners that were um, using the online banking, one thing you want to look at is can that, um, that, that bank provide you with a profit and loss statement when you need it? Uh, uh, like Melba said, can you get the bank statements in, in a traditional way um, rather than, you know, like I was getting screenshots and stuff and uh, trying to piece together where the money was coming and going and all the information was not clear. And so if you're going to go that route, just see, to just make sure that they have everything that you could um, pull just as easily as you could from a traditional bank. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That was a good question, Albert. I know things are, uh, a lot of things are going online now and this is coming from a and a banker, I, I'm not too familiar with the, the business bank side online. So that's a, that's something that's a little bit different. So uh, thank you, Melba and uh, Jocelyn for that. Um, I know we're at five o'clock now. I, I did see a question in the chat um, regarding the PowerPoint. Um, Jocelyn, is that something that you might be able to, to provide tomorrow possibly or, or yes. just the one in time frame? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to provide the PowerPoint, has all the links to all the resources that I shared. And I'll also provide the file for the um, cottage food business, the application and um, their entire packet that they have. Perfect. Yes, those resources were very good. So definitely spend some time when you do get it. Um, remember, uh, make a note to go back, go through the, go through that sp uh, slide specifically, and look at those resources and visit them uh, because those are some good ones. Uh, after me, even one of those uh, I wasn't familiar with, Jocelyn, so I learned something today too. So I appreciate that. Thank goodness. Sorry, I don't talk this much, you guys. So <laughs> that was a lot for me. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too much for you guys. <laughs> no, it was all great. So no, this this was very good. Uh, definitely appreciate both of you, Melba and Jocelyn, and thank you all of you for coming. Be on the lookout for that PowerPoint. Again, um, um, you'll all be informed of any of our future events too at CLO. And remember our, our uh, workshop series is monthly. So be on the lookout for our next one, which will be next year. Other than that, um, everybody have a great night and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Have a great day, thank guys. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.